step one was to install this vertical uh, rail here. This will hold in the divider pans. Okay, so that is step one. The next step is to install this large vertical plate here. You've got a couple of screws here, a couple of screws at the top, and two down at the bottom. Next step is to install the bracket holding all these uh, bus covers. This piece here, this has a couple of tabs that have to slide and interlock, one at the top, one in the middle there, and then one way at the bottom. They are secured through three screws. I have one here on each cross member, basically. You've got one here, got one here, and I've got one here. So again, this was the, the next bracket, the next vertical rail, and the divider pans will clip in here and screw in in some cases, or just lock in with these little tangs. The next step was to install the bus bar with the white insulator uh, and the copper bus details, the vertical bars. That was done through this sort of assembly being sort of dropped in and then raised upward. That way these bars could get behind the, the horizontal. So each one had to slide up underneath and you raised it up till you got the uh, holes aligned. There'll be about 50 screws, about 24 on this side and about 26 on this side. And the extra two on the left hand side are the two that are gonna be hidden up behind the horizontal. There's one and there's two. They are a bit of a challenge to get out, but through a uh, slow process, you can get them out. So then we've gone ahead and tightened up all those quarter 20 screws throughout all the gold ones that you see on the outside. Then we went ahead and the vertical bars are, you can see they're mated directly to the horizontal. There is a little uh, gold metal plate spacer that actually acts as a threaded nut. So the bolt comes through the back, through the insulation. It threads into the copper plate, which holds the bolt captive. And then when you're all said and done, the, um, the lock washer and the nut go on top and those are tightened. And uh, if possible, you know, these things were a bit of an issue, falling in behind the insulator, uh, making it difficult. It probably would be best to get these out of the way. We did it with them attached, so it is possible, but they were a bit of a, a problem getting that uh, vertical bar in place, but it, it, it can be done with them. So the next step was to install this top divider pan or isolation barrier uh, and subsequently installing the plastic uh, covers here that expose the bus so the way I we did it um, was we caught our screws which are one here one here one here one here one here one here and before we sort of caught them all this had some flexibility to kind of pull it down a little bit we then went ahead and sort of installed these there's a little gap, basically, it looks like it's between here and here, that you can center these, push them up, and then they can kind of drop down into this track here. There's two tracks, one in the front for the front barrier, one track in the back for the, for the, for the back barrier. So once I got those in place, I was able to kind of raise this, this pan up into place and finally catch and secure all my screws. Uh, there is one plate that I've left out that is a little bit difficult to see. Um, it's it's this gizmo here. You can see the two little uh, Phillips head screws there by my fingers. And this thing actually goes up into here and it actually attaches through a screw here and through the screw here. I've left that out and I'm gonna go ahead and put it in now and I'll show you the results when I'm finished. Uh, getting out this pan was virtually impossible with leaving this bracket attached to it. So we went ahead and removed that, that piece we were able to get the pan out and then we went ahead and put it back in in the reverse direction. Pan first, bracket second. So we'll go ahead and install that now. All right, so we've gone ahead and attached that little extra angle bracket and you really can't see it, 
but you can see the two screws that are now attached. It's, it's hidden behind here. So um, you'll have to remove those two screws, pull that bracket out to get this top pan out. And again, in the reverse direction, putting the pan in first and then reattaching the angle bracket onto the outside of this divider pan on the left side. So the top barrier is in, the covers are in, and we're good to go to the next step. All right, the next step was this large L bracket. This is, connect this is all one piece of sheet metal. It comes down here and it ends right here. This line right here is the end of it. So this big L bracket, which is also has a bottom divider pan or isolation barrier, it's riveted to it, so that will stay with it. Uh, you have to, we also just added this ground strap. So this actually was not there first. We slid the large bracket in. We co connected it through two screws here, two screws at the top, right there. And then there were two screws down there. It's a reoccurring pattern where everything is basically uh, screwing into those horizontal cross members. That's one of them there. That's the second one. And that's the third one. So basically those are your, your main structure supports. Uh, and, and this bracket is no different as it screws into those three brackets. Uh, we maneuvered this plate around. Um, and we secured those. We then went ahead and added this little ground strap that connects the vertical ground bar down to this horizontal ground bar down here where my finger's pointing at. So using a nut and bolt here and then a nut and bolt here. And that, that secures the ground horizontal to the ground vertical bar. So now that those are caught, we can go ahead and start adding in our support brackets here and connecting these, these screws to this rail over here. So we'll do that in the next step. All right, so we've gone ahead, um, probably at this time, uh, probably before you put this guy in, this vertical rail, which is what we just did, you probably should go ahead and attach your wireway door. We actually never took it off, uh, but you know, it's probably best to put it on now uh, or before now. Um, but again, it, it is doable at any point. You just need a, you know, a ratchet or something small profile that you can get in and attach the hinges here to the, to this vertical rail. So what we've gone ahead and done in this next step is we've attached this vertical rail, the 15, 15 inch wide vertical rail, which allows the wireway door to have somewhere to close onto and allows the unit substructure doors to close onto this as well. And the uh, hinges would be attached over here, or the latches for the uh, the quarter turns, I mean, I should say. So we went ahead and installed this bracket, and in turn also secured this thing. So this, uh, so this, I'll start over. This large bracket was attached. There's a little angle bracket, which we left on. We connected it here at these two Phillips head screws. And then we subsequently connected the top. Similarly, with two Phillips head screws right there. Uh, so once we got those caught, we went ahead and caught the, we caught the very bottom divider pan. There's a set of screws here and here that you have to go ahead and secure. That makes this bottom pan rigid now because now it's screwed here and it's screwed here. Uh, so we went ahead and tightened up the two screws here and the two screws at the very top tightened up these two screws And now everything is rigid One thing to note this uh, large sheet metal that we put in this large sheet metal angle that we put in previously This little tab goes actually in between This channel. This is a little piece of channel like this this bracket went inside the channel so it's actually it can't come this it can't come towards us and it can't go away from us it's sort of held in position okay so we'll go ahead and move on to the next step the little item here that we forgot to mention before was this little bracket we've gone ahead and put in a little support bracket there's actually no screw connection on this side it's just actually pressure holding it and there's two screws right here that actually uh, fasten it in um, 
and that's really it. You can see it kind of flexes a little bit. There's like a little tang here that it locks into, but there's no actual screw on the left side. There's two screws on the right side. So we've gone ahead and put that in. And now we've gone ahead and started to fit the cell. Uh, we put in a divider pan. So we're working on that. Divider pan screws here. It attaches into here. Some attach here, not all. Uh, attaches there. Some screw in there, not all. And it attaches here. So we'll go ahead, we're gonna put the one divider pan in, we're gonna put another one across the bottom, and we'll attach our door and put our bucket in. So we've gone ahead and prepared the space. Uh, as we mentioned, put in the top divider pan, put in the bottom divider pan. Uh, again, those were attached by a screw here, a screw here, and a screw back there. We've gone ahead and put the hinges in, and we've, or I'm sorry, the catches or the latches, I keep calling them hinges, and we put the hinge for the door in. So when you look at a rail, typically you'll see three holes. The middle hole is gonna be what attaches the door hinge. The top hole is gonna be what attaches the divider pan. The early days, the divider pan actually attached at the first and third hole. This metal would have come down, it would have had a clearance hole for this to go through it, and the divider pan would have originally attached here and here, some early models that way. The newer models, they uh, redesigned and actually made them a little shorter and only connect here. So in most cases, the bottom hole will not be used. What you may find is that these holes on this rail, this rail, or even in the back, they may not be threaded. You may have to tap those. Uh, that can be done with a <clears throat> regular tap or a, uh, a self-cutting screw. Um, probably best to use a tap if you have one, but if not, the uh, sometimes the provided thread cutting screws will also do the job. Uh, so we've gone ahead and got that. The door is on. You can go ahead and make sure your latch is closed and uh, make sure the door looks okay. We've gone ahead and, and removed the insulator from the top hole. That's where our stab will bite onto. Uh, we're going to go ahead now and install a bucket and put it in the space. So the bucket is in. Uh, you go ahead. I have no breaker installed, but that's how that works. Release the quarter turns. Door should open. And bucket is installed. Um, scissor mechanism is fully closed. Yeah, bucket's got a little bow in it. Don't, don't look at that. Uh, but you can see the thing is installed. The bucket frame is virtually in line with the, the channel here, the vertical channel. Uh, you can sort of see that the top of the bucket is pretty much parallel with the divider pan in both corners, or all four corners for that matter. So you feel confident that it's all the way in. Look at the camera on this stuff inside. You can sort of see, you may be able to kind of see that how far this is in with the breaker. It may be a little more difficult. Uh, you can't get a side view. But uh, you know it's in when the door closes all the way.